flow. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, <clears throat> so here's some of the green I'm wearing for this video. Though you might not be able to see it completely, you know, as I'm sitting like this. But yeah, I'm wearing green, at least for this video. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I was uh, wondering what kind of video to make for uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day. And, well, I've got some new stuff. And so I thought I'll uh, talk about those. But before I do... Um, uh, last time I talked about steel books and such, and um, at least the what most of the ones that I have, and I thought I'll highlight some of the others that because uh, I did sort of like allude to uh, having other like steel books and such. So <clears throat> I thought just to finish that off, I'll just talk about those real quick and. Um, now, I know this might not be technically a steel book exactly, but I don't know. It's close enough, it's a tin. It's about a, you know, the ocean and stuff and all the animals and things there, and yeah. Five disc uh, DVD set, which uh, is pretty cool, honestly. Uh, Got how big this was, but yeah, I got this years ago, many, many years ago. Um, it's like something from like, uh, I believe they say, uh, my back, like, you know, uh, this is uh, uh, from uh, basically from the uh, BBC, National Geographic, and Discovery Channel. So, um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you saw this years ago. This came out in 2005. Uh, this set, and it's uh, 10 hours, and there's five discs. So, yeah. Overall, but yeah, so there is that. Um, And then that there. And then this. I'm actually sort of surprised I didn't mention, especially since it was down here. But um, it follows. I talked about this already. Uh, saw it in the theater when it came out, and uh, I enjoyed it when I saw it uh, the first time and. Still do. It's uh, pretty good film. Um, yeah. Um, Glare, you know. And considering, you know, I'm gonna some, sh I guess, showcase some new movies I got. Wrapping up this sort of other show and tell that I kind of did last uh, time might be fairly appropriate. And here is the the Lego Batman movie. 
and uh, this is a pretty cool. I enjoyed this movie. Um, um, I remember there was going to be like a a sequel at some point, but then I don't know. Things happened, and so they, uh, they just either has been completely canceled entirely or there might be something there. There's the back cave with the, the monitors. But yeah, I don't know. Pretty sure it isn't happening now, but you never know. There could always be something that happens in which They will uh, get something together that is pretty good, but I've heard it's either canceled or just basically uh, basically on hold and definitely that for the time being. But yeah, Lego Batman's pretty cool. Uh, at least I thought. There. And uh, this is TV, but you know. The Walking Dead, the sixth season. Uh, it was fairly, uh, you know, it was actually fairly cheap considering, you know, not only is this a steel book, but it was not too long after. I was like, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got this at Target. So it wasn't overtly ex overly expensive. And, yeah. Larger World. I forgot this. It's There's disc one and two and three and four, five. Yeah, it's it's quite something in the sense of how they just. Had the uh, discs for the steel book here, but yeah. yeah. I don't see too many shows with steel books. Might be for the best, but because of kind of like this, the kind of the oddity of it, but yeah. This wasn't the most expensive out there, so I thought I'll just get that. And uh, here is this. I know again, this is more like a tin, sort of like the DVD, but here is this again, Friday the 13th. Most shocking slasher film series now on the Ultimate uh, Blu-ray collection. Which has all of the discs, which I've already shown before on this. Long, long time ago, and uh, it is fairly dusty, so... Please forgive that in yeah, there's some shipping and I got it. <laughs> They're all doomed. And it has comes with uh, pairs of uh, 3D glasses. And the Camp Crystal Lake Iron On Patch uh, for Kit Counselor. Yeah. And yeah, this is and the uh, ultraviolet thing there, which uh, I've already used, so yeah. Yeah, no doubt I've already. looked at that, but, yeah. Well, 
little sneak peek of the book of the of uh, Crystal Lake Memories of sorts, sort of like a very abridged version of all those films. Except for the reboot. The reboot wasn't included because, you know, that had been made by the time they made the film. So. Um, they do list it there, though, because uh, it's not part of the set. It's a uh, Yeah, that's that. It's just, I guess, sort of like a, an abridged version of that as much as one could get. And the discs and these, uh, which people really loved, the presentation there. Yeah. This is a collector's item now. Four. Yeah, you probably can't even see all this very well. I apologize, but yeah. Five and six on one disc. Seven and eight. Nine and ten. And then eleven and twelve get their own discs. And I know a lot of people complained about how two movies were on one disc for like a good por portion of them. And then also with nine, you get the R-rated version, which everybody loves for that film. If you're going to watch it, everybody watches the R-rated version. And the DVD, which was from the original uh, eight-disc uh, or eight film set on DVD from Paramount, uh, but yeah, and for some reason they've got the uh, Jason X. Despite that's not something that's actually there, or in that it's not discussed, I should say. And if I recall correctly, all it does is just have the same. It's the same thing. It's the same discard and everything from that set. So it really it has it. They didn't even make it look new or get more uh, new artwork for this. So uh, yeah, I know this might not be technically a steel book. Same with that DVD, but you know, you never know. Somebody might. Uh, uh, you never know that. Even though this set, you know, which, while not the absolute uh, amazing, uh, groundbreaking, beloved thing that people uh, unanimous, unanimously uh, gave praise over, uh, uh, for what for what it was at the time, it was uh, pretty good for the most part, even though. You know, part nine, having just the uh, unrated, or not the unrated uh, being part of this was disappointing, as well as uh, later on, the Shout Factory, Scream Factory uh, set came out with all of them and all of the those films. being in the best uh, uh, presentation they could be. Yeah, it's just great. So, there's that. I don't really talk about this much anymore, but then again, why would? You know, why would I at this point? You know, I've talked about that franchise a lot, and I thought this might be the last time I'll really show it off uh, in any proper way as if that was all that proper but still you know uh, 
All right, uh, 15 minutes, okay, well. Uh, then again, I guess I didn't really plan to do like a show and tell inside and everything, but whatever. Kind of did that with some of them last time, but in any event, the new stuff I got. Um, start out with Elvis. Saw this film at the time of recording. The Academy Awards have not happened, so I have no clue if this, you know, won anything. It probably would win something, I would imagine. I know Austin Butler's received a lot of praise and a good amount of awards. You know, the praise, I do think, was is very well, <clears throat> well deserved. Um, I don't know if I would say he is the best, and you know, would like to see him win. You know, best actor. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would say that. Still, uh, on uh, you know, uh, uh, Brendan Fraser. Uh, Fraser. I've been saying it wrong all these years. Uh, but Brendan Fraser for uh, the whale. I still like that performance the best. Uh, but you know, I, for me, in the ranking of the nominees and such that are out there, or that we know. You know, uh, if he won, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a terrible thing. It would have been like, oh dang, you know, yeah, that that was a horrible performance. It's nothing like that. You know, it's not one of those. It wouldn't be one of those situations where it's like um, uh, you watch it and you're just mystified and shocked. Like, like that, yeah, he, he won Best Actor. All right, he wasn't even that. Uh, impressive. Um, did a very good job. And, uh, it's not my preferred pick, but I would not be, you know, terribly disappointed if he won. It would be actually uh, fairly shocking if, uh, you know, there are some people I would think that would win more, or perhaps over him, like Brandon Fraser, for instance. So if he doesn't beat him or person in this next movie I'm going to show that I got didn't beat him, it would be very shocking because the other two nominees are not even, we're not even, not, uh, haven't really received a lot of major awards that would, you would think would, you know, uh, <clears throat> get them an Academy Award. Um, but yeah. Elvis is a fine movie for what it is. Um, I'm not the biggest Elvis expert or the hugest fan. I mean, I, I like some of his music. Uh, you know, he does have some, definitely has some good songs. Um, but, you know, it was like, it's just one of those things. I didn't grow up listening to Elvis a lot, so I don't really have too much uh, uh, attachment uh, of those songs of his, if that makes sense. Uh, but they're not bad, you know, obviously. But, you know, I don't have a huge attachment to, like, Elvis and watching any and everything Elvis. And I've heard about criticisms about how certain things were, you know, either left out or made up for the sake of a film. Which, of course, you know, it being Hollywood, you kind of have to expect that. You, you kind of do at this point. You know, sometimes they'll try to be as truthful as they can be, but maybe if certain events aren't the most um, interesting, let's say, um, then, you know, they uh, won't exactly be the most... You know, if like certain events actually happened, they're not something that people would really love to see unfold on screen. They would basically, you know, uh, either omit it entirely or try to make it as interesting as possible if there's nothing all that interesting that went on. Uh, that would appease an audience, you know. Hope all that made sense because that was kind of a, a pretty much like a run off of a tangent of whatever that kind of made sense yet all the same at the same time didn't totally but yeah 
So Elvis is a fine movie, really uh, bolstered by a, uh, an amazing performance by its lead. Um, it's nice to look at, too. You know, then again, uh, Baz Luhrmann, who directed it, you know, he, he usually has films that are, at the very least, uh, very visually great to look at. You know, you're, you're, if anything, you could say it's eye, can eye candy. You know, it's just really like, wow. Just amazing to look at. So, that's Elvis. Uh, and the person I could see, aside from Brendan Fraser, that would be in the realm of potentially winning the Academy Award for Best Actor is Colin Farrell and the Banshees of Inisherin. Also has Brendan Gleeson. Um, one thing I have to say is it's unfortunate that this broke shipping. Uh, so I'm going to probably have to get a, a replacement case because I know they sell those. I've seen some in like, uh, like get five for uh, at a pretty deep good price, uh, like on Amazon and other places. So. But yeah, that's kind of disappointing, but, you know, I enjoyed this film. This is a very good film. Uh, probably one of the best films of last year, uh, I would say at least. And uh, while it doesn't seem to be uh, nearing the uh, amount of awards, uh, uh, you know, uh, buzz, let's say, for like in terms of like winning a whole lot of stuff. If anything, if I had to say what I would like to see win, like best picture and director and such, um, I would say this, just, uh, that's just me. Uh, of course, you know, who knows? Um, but I enjoyed this, I thought it was very good. I haven't seen everywhere or everything everywhere all at once. I know there's a lot of hype around that and, um, who knows, maybe I'll enjoy it, or I might, if I do see it, maybe I'll think it's a bit overrated, like it's good, but maybe not best picture winning good, if that makes sense. Uh, but I don't know, uh, some of the hype I've heard around it is sort of similar to uh, Birdman, and I think Birdman's a fine movie, but, you know, it's, I don't know, I wouldn't have chosen it for best picture, but... You know, there are other films that were nominated or not nominated for Best Picture, I think, were better than Birdman. And, and maybe that will be the sentiment I will have whenever I do see it. But I could also think it was deserving. I don't know. Again, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't really, you know, comment. Uh, but I, from the films I have seen that were up for be that are up for Best Picture... I would like to see this win, but, you know, it's the Academy Awards. You know, you you never know what will happen. And, you know, I never watch them. Uh, I just see who wins what, just out of curiosity. If somebody I like and I guess, would be rooting for. If, you know, if you can even say I'm rooting for anyone, which I'm not really. But, uh, well, I guess Brandon Fraser is the, like, the only one I'm really want to see receive like an Academy Award because he gave an incredible performance. Um, but I wouldn't be upset if Colin Farrell won, for instance. Um, I think he's the second best uh, for the best actor category and then Austin Butler. So, yeah. That's me, at least, but, you know. So, of course... Brendan Gleeson is in this, as well as um, Carrie Condon and Barry Kogan. Um, yeah. Mark McDowell uh, made uh, Three Billboards. That's a very good film, too. But, yeah. I really enjoy this film. Very good film. I think it's uh, worth a watch. If you haven't seen it, um, I might make a video about this at some point in the 
near future. Hopefully, whenever that happens, I'll have a new case for it too. And um, I know I showed this off when I got this uh, years ago for the uh, you know the uh, <clears throat> Criterion Collection video drum with James Woods and the cool Betamax tape and the and uh, this is a very good film and I like this version of this film it's really good but arrow had another one or had one of their own this is in 4k so i got this i was able to get it and um this has two cuts the uh u.s theatrical cut and the uh, uh future length uh, director's cut approved and, and in 4k so if anything there's it's cool that this had the 4k upgrade as well as you know really a lot of the same stuff for extras on here uh with like a extra like some new stuff like a new commentary as well as you know both cuts of the film this one I recall just had like one cut uh so being able to see both versions of the U.S. theatrical cut and the director's cut is really awesome, I think. And, uh, yeah. And, of course, there's, uh, you know, there's this, but there's also uh, another version of this, which would have a different cover. And that cover would have been, would be this, the uh, poster, the or at least the original poster, which also... And like Donnie Darko, the, that set that I got came with poster and reversible cover as well. And so here is the cover of the, of this. And then here is also the uh, the other poster or the other poster that most people know uh, with Videodrome you know, and it's by David Cronenberg and he's an interesting filmmaker for sure starring James Woods James Woods is an excellent actor always has been uh, and it has this uh, cool uh, book Long Live the New Flesh Walter P uh, PPK gun. I don't know if you can see all that, but yeah. This film is 40 years old, too, so maybe I'll talk about it uh, this year. Um, if it, I might have talked about this already, so might be the case, but still...
some really cool and trippy stuff that goes on in this movie. I li I'm really liking Arrow, you know, I, you know, I've, uh, I really like, uh, the presentations they do with, uh, you know, uh, Donnie Darko and this film, as well as another I'm going to talk about, but that one is also an older movie, but yeah, I, I really enjoy Videodrome and, uh, you know, the, the upgrade of to 4K is also great. And uh, being able to watch both versions is awesome. And, uh, yeah. Great, great, uh, great, great film. Just uh, maybe not that. And um, the other Arrow movie I got not too long ago um, is a uh, Fish Called Wanda. Now this is a film that has been out of print for a while, but was able to find this at a fairly decent price. And I'm, if not mistaken, I've already talked about this. But while uh, also you know. Video drone is 40 years old. This film is 35 years old, and so is Rain Man. I really, uh, I just love this film. It's just hilarious. Performances are amazing. And yeah, I, I think that, uh, John Cleese should have won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Uh, as well as Charles Crichton, who also directed the film, who was also nominated for directing this. And, um, uh, Kevin Klein won, uh, for, uh, Best Supporting Actor. I think it is pretty well deserved. Uh, it's just hilarious. And, um, I'll show you what the other cover looks like which is the original poster so yeah and this was brand new when I got it, it was like wrapped and everything so that's uh, also another thing that's cool I like how Arrow and Criterion still have like these little booklets and such that used to be fairly uh, common, like DVDs. And then when, as time went on, they didn't have them as much. And then with Blu-rays, they didn't, they, you know, they barely have them at all for Blu-rays. There might be a couple early uh, Blu-ray releases that had anything like this. It had like the, the scenes and such um, that were, you know, printed on here, and of course. That's, uh, here is the version with the cut, the other cover that we've got here, the slip cover. And you know, with certain releases like this, I think it's cool to have at least the slip cover in this case. I know, like, you know, getting the slip cover isn't always the most important thing, obviously, but I think if you're able to get it, okay, come on, why don't you want to, there, you want to go back in, fine, but with Arrow and also Shout Factory, Scream Factory, I also noticed that this was always a thing with, uh, a fish called Wanda, I I don't know if that was a, something that Arrow does all the time, since I'm pretty new at getting Arrow films, so uh, please uh, forgive my uh, lack of knowledge regarding 
uh, any a whole lot of things with Arrow, but you know, it's quite interesting. I think there I might have seen this uh, at other places, at other for, for other films too, but I can't recall. And this version has a 4K restoration for Blu-ray, and um, yeah. I believe has everything that you know has all the uh, stuff for the two disc DVD, which I have. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I've already talked about that. I recall now that I'm talking about this a little bit more. Yeah, I did take talk about this. So yeah, but yeah, this is an excellent excellent film, and the Arrow release is just great. It looks fantastic. I love it. And uh, the last new thing I got is uh, the Rocky uh, Knockout Collection. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, complained about, you know, some of the stuff with the sound and such. For me, it wasn't uh, a terrible thing. Like, the quality of the sound and everything wasn't a horrendous thing where I'm like, I, you know, you know, want my money back or, uh, replacement discs for one or two of the films or so. And of course, part of the reason they get this is because with the fourth film, you've got the theatrical cut and Rocky versus Drago, the ultimate director's cut, which is really just a, uh, which is three more minutes longer than the theatrical cut, but there's some, you know, new scenes, sort of new or extended scenes that are, that replace some scenes that used to uh, be there uh, in the original cut, which I have on Blu-ray. I've already talked about the franchise overall. So here is the first six films. And then, uh, of course, Rocky Creed and Creed II. Um, now, I haven't, I haven't seen Creed three in the theater, and I probably won't because, well, reason being, didn't see these two in the theater, didn't see Rocky Balboa in the theater uh, when it came out in 2000. Uh, six, which I believe, if I am, I believe it was like Christmas or so. I could be wrong, but I think it was around Christmas time or so. And um, and I hadn't seen. I was really getting into the Rocky films, and um, part of why I, you know, had I seen all of them at that point, I probably would have tried to get my mom to go to see Rocky Balboa or Rocky Six as some like to call it but um, <clears throat> you know at that point I had only because uh, they were playing all the Rocky movies for the most part on TV in preparation for Rocky Six or Rocky Balboa but you know I was able to see one two and three the fifth film you know is not the most beloved but uh, you know, whenever it would be on, it was usually on late at night. So either, and if I'm recalling correctly, if it was Christmas, you know, either I was asleep or I might have been able to stay awake long enough to, like during Christmas break to see some of it, but I probably would have fallen asleep through the rest of it. So, you know, I wanted to been able to really watch all of five and considering how the first four were it's like you know you know they're pretty consistent they basically pick up right where the last one left off and um so with that you know uh, i didn't see rocky balboa in the theater i don't really know why i didn't see creed in the theater Looking back, there really was no reason. Same with Creed 2, but 
I think with Creed 2, if I didn't see Creed 1, you know, I'm not going to see Creed 2. But I can't think of why I didn't see Creed 2. You know, it wasn't like money wasn't a major issue at that point, nor uh, was it like, you know, something where too many things were happening, and so you can't, I could, couldn't see it. Uh, at least not the, around that time, like I could have, because it, that movie was in theaters for like a good few months. So I could have seen it at any point uh, during its run, but I just didn't, I don't know why, I couldn't begin to a answer why, I just didn't. So, I probably won't see three, Creed 3 in theaters either, you know. I'll wait for it to come out on uh, Blu-ray or maybe 4K and Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray and also Blu-ray. Uh, probably, since it came out at the very beginning of this month, I would guess maybe late May to early June maybe even July I don't know I, I can't guess exactly because sometimes I mean it seems like you know after a couple months it comes out on Blu-ray a film these days in theaters but sometimes if a film is in theaters for a good period of time and is making a lot of money they'll keep it in theaters so they'll hold off on the Blu-ray or the physical media stuff uh, longer. But, you know, I think that overall this is a fine collection. Of course, it also has a bonus disc. You know, I already have the digital copy, so I'm not worried about any of that, but of all these movies. So, it's Rocky, Rocky 2, II, Rocky 3. Rocky Four, Rocky Four, Rocky vs. Drago, the Ultimate Director's Cut, and a Blu-ray disc, which you know it says a bonus disc with special features from Rocky, which is sort of like on this set, which has three hours of bonus features and uh, as the uh, like a behind the scenes making of documentary uh, of Rocky versus Drago for the fourth film however this is that version's like on here that's like is like an hour long or about that and uh, you can find it on YouTube and that's an hour and a half a little over an hour and a half so it's a bit disappointing that they uh didn't uh, include that uh, there. And also some of the stuff that is on the bonus disc for, you know, this film or this set. You know, like video commentary with Sylvester Stallone. You know, I didn't... You know, it has some of the... of the, like the documentary, like a, in the ring, basically, and some featurettes. But uh, and tributes, but overall, you know, some of the stuff that was included here uh, was not uh, in this, or was not in this set. But you know, if you have this and this, you pretty much have everything. Well, now that I think of it, I. Maybe that I'm pretty sure in the ring the three part documentary is on here. But I don't know. I, no, it's one of those things about that I'm thinking about it. Plus, it's fairly late at night. Which probably isn't <laughs> helping for the most part. But you know, I'm uh, also doing this on the weekend, so I'm able to be a little more lenient. But yeah, some of the stuff. I, I'm speaking out loud and reading this. I don't know if all that is some like I think I'm pretty sure the uh, three part making of documentary is in this. I'm pretty sure, or on this, 
you know, I'm pretty sure the problem is it doesn't list it or anything other than with special features from Rocky and extended behind the scenes documentary of making of Rocky versus Drago keep punching. You know, that's all it says for like extras. It doesn't list any of the other extras. You know. But overall, this is not a terrible set. I know there are people who are disappointed by some of the you know, whatever audio issues do exist here, though. I wasn't particularly perturbed to the point of, you know, wanting a, a refund or a disc replacements. Plus, I got this from Amazon. It was like 60 bucks. Um, and I do know Best Buy has like the steel books selling for like 25 bucks individually so and i don't believe there would have been a bonus disc for rocky one or four to have the or the who knows maybe on the rocky one they would have had all the special features um and and the documentary for rocky four uh one and you know individually it's very possible but um of course when i check to get so looking at this and those individually, they didn't really say anything about special features. So this one I knew had like a the uh, the making of Rocky versus Drago keep punching and like a like overall a bonus disc. So I'm like get this because who knows maybe individually they won't have those special features. And so. Uh, that's really it. Uh, 15 minutes at the beginning talking about the other remaining like steel books and you know what could be perhaps labeled steel books. But yeah, I I enjoyed this uh, uh, set. Of course, the only uh, up uh, downside I would say is Rocky Five and. Rocky Balboa are not on 4K either. Now, I do know there is uh, 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 a work print of Rocky V floating on the internet that people have found and, and has surfaced at some point, and people have watched it, and I've heard Stone wants to make uh, or release that properly, you know, or at least... <clears throat> take the work print and then keep certain elements that were removed from the fifth film. Yeah, and maybe some things are rightfully deleted, but you know, the work print overall will be like the entire, all the best takes put into the film <clears throat> with all the major scenes put cut down to a point where it's like, that could be seen as the director's cut and then you yeah, trim it down to, Perhaps a shorter length. Which, uh... Rocky Five. how... You know. Of course it doesn't say here. Nor does it say on the disc. That's nice. Um... Yeah, I don't know how. Oh, well, if I paid more attention to this, uh, 104 minutes. So, could be, of course, John Avelson, who uh, directed Rocky Run 1, directed Rocky 5. Stallone did 2, 3, 4, and 6. But, you know, he, you know, John Avelson, he's passed away so it could be like perhaps an ultimate cut of the film of the fifth film uh not necessarily the director's cut even though perhaps stallone and him talked quite a bit about how they wished rocky four would have looked like you know with the work print but who knows uh i also know that uh, stallone 
is on the best terms with uh, Irvin uh, Winkler, who owns the franchise and has been producing all of the films from the first one and won the Academy Award for Best Picture for the first Rocky film. So, <clears throat> you know, Stallone is upset because he feels like he was used when he was young and, you know, he doesn't have any rights to really the character. Whatever residuals he gets is like for, you know, I don't know if he gets comp uh, much residuals for the first film, but if, it, if he gets anything, it's not like ownership of any kind. It's like you get some royalties or you know, res residuals for <clears throat> uh, the first film, uh, as well as no doubt probably for the uh four Rocky films he directed. But, you know, because he doesn't have any ownership, you know, he's not able to take Rocky, the Rocky franchise, in a way he would like to uh, do it. And part of that is also because of, you know, seems to be because of, as to why he's not in Creed Three. You know, there could be other reasons, you know, it's like, you know, trying to pass the torch and, I've heard that there are, like, some, you know, flashbacks of sorts of, like, archive footage from, like, uh, maybe, the, like, the early films, I, I would guess, perhaps, like, the Creed films in particular. Or it could be, like, the footage that we saw of, you know, the boxing with Rocky and um, Drago or Apollo Creed and Rocky boxing and all that from those films. You know, that could be, I don't know, because I haven't seen it yet, but uh, no doubt when I do, I will see if those are completely accurate or if those are just people saying stuff because, you know, I guess there was word that people weren't going to see it because Rocky isn't in the film. But, you know, that was announced pretty soon, not that long after uh Tree 3 was announced to happen, and sometime later it was said Stallone wouldn't return. Hopefully, though, he and Irving Lingler are able to <clears throat> patch things together, or at least bury the hatchet, and maybe something can happen where everybody is happy. He's happy, uh, Lingler's happy. And also, you know, Stallone's like, you know, at this point, it's not even just for him. It's, you know, his kids, you know, you know, you know like grandkids. That way, he, like, you do something like Rocky or whatever, then he's like, that isn't just for me. This is also for my children. So it seems like that seems to be a, a thing or he wants to try and have enough ownership so that he's able to make money from it, but that can be passed on to his kids. So in the event of if things that happen to, uh, they happen to be in a big, you know, bumpy uh, part of their lives or it's all rocky and such, you know, no pun intended, but, you know, they have some money coming in because of the, whatever residuals they could get from the Rocky franchise after that, you know, Stallone would give to his kids, you know, of course, though, that would likely be when he's, you know, passed on, which I hope isn't for quite a long time, you know, but yeah. Anyway, that's a whole thing. And, you know, and I've been thinking about watching, you know, not only just rewatching all these films, but also talking about them, especially whenever Creed Three comes out. But who knows? Maybe next time I will start talking about the Rocky films. Um, I talked about them overall as a franchise for uh, the forty-fifth uh, anniversary of the first film. I mean, I'm pretty sure, and so. Yeah, I, you know, I really love the Rocky franchise, uh, and I could get into why, but perhaps it might be fairly cliched as to why a lot of people enjoy those films. 
Um, but yeah. That's really it. That's all I have to say with the new stuff I've gotten. And the finishing up with the Steelbooks uh, stuff. So yeah. That's all I really have to say. Um, my voice seems to be starting to go, so I apologize for the dry <laughs> sound in my voice. Uh, at some point be like in the middle or near the end being hoarse and such but I hope the video is pretty uh, interesting to some extent uh, do you have any of these movies uh, these, or at least maybe even seen some of them do you like them or not do you like any of them or not I guess I sh should say that'd be more <laughs> more appropriate um, but yeah, what, what do you think of any or all of these films? Uh, you can, uh, leave them in a comment if you would like. And yeah, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day and a great week. And I will see you all next time. Bye.